Hi, Teddy. You take all my attention. Billy is limping on his back foot. There he is. You are loud. We have a visitor today. So we're gonna scan mom. Of course, now it's like a whiteout. Morning guys, we are just about ready to weigh lambs here this morning. I remembered last week I wasn't happy with, I kind of thought maybe the weights didn't seem right. Like they just seemed really light for how old they're getting. Um, so I was going to grab a weight. I have weights in the house, just something to maybe calibrate my scale, just to see at least if we're close. Also, look how pretty it is this morning. Wow. That was a workout, by the way. Oh my god, my arms. Okay, well we finished that job up and we ended up surprisingly with I think 19 lambs ready to go. So I was hoping that was going to happen. I was hoping uh, because I missed last week that this week would be all right. I did put a weight on that scale. So what I did is I actually took some one of some lambs that were 104 pounds and over. So I'll go through today's stats. I think we had seven ready and I think average weight with those ones last week was like 109. So we'll see what this week's are. And I just basically added them to the pen that we had ready last week. Why I didn't ship them last week is like to load them up on a trailer, take the trailer and basically 45 minutes each way. So an hour and a half, that's like an hour and a half of labor, fuel, wear and tear on your vehicle for seven lambs. Uh, it just, the, it's not really that economical. So that's kind of why I just voted not to do it. However, I'm looking at the weather on Wednesday and it's looking like we're going to get quite a bit of snow and I hate driving the truck and trailer when the roads are pretty nasty. So I will be stewing about that for a couple days, but until then, let's look at the stats as to what this group looked like. Yeah, minimum 104, max 109. So the average was actually only 106 this week, uh, and there was 12. So we have 12 plus the seven at 109 average. So they're probably gonna be, they're probably in that 107 maybe, or 108 depending on how big the lambs I had ready last week are this week. So I did not reweigh them because they're already in my system. So I just, I didn't, I just left them where they are. So we didn't have to run them all through again. And uh, yeah, they'll be there for Wednesday. Today's Monday. Yeah. Now, uh, I know I've talked to you guys about this before, but we, it is confirmed that uh, Michael from Flockwatch is coming to the farm here on Wednesday as well as me having to ship lambs. I'm really excited about this because 2023, I want to get better at not only collecting data, but really analyzing the right data to help kind of uh, make me a little more successful. <laughs> And then Charlie's supposed to be here before the end of the week again to shear that huge group. So that's going to be a big, big day. So this week has filled up all of a sudden, just like that, always does. It's 
funny when you're cleaning up a bit and just hanging out with your sheep. That's typically when I just stand back and watch what they're doing. Especially the rams, right? Because they're busy. And I noticed Billy is limping on his back foot. We have had issues with his front. I believe it was front. I got him all treated ages ago, like a couple months ago, I think. And now he's limping on his back foot and it looks swollen. So I wonder if he either was fighting or he hit a gate when he was trying to mount or who knows. The other one that's caught my eye is his daddy. So William, head down looking depressed he's just not himself like he's usually the one really running around now none of them are running around right now but he's just he's been off and i notice his back end he's like he's kind of like tiptoeing like he's not walking great so i wonder if he's had a little bit of damage like maybe he got hit or his hips so i've treated both him and billy how are you doing? This foot right there. Billy? Can you kind of see him holding it up though? There he is. So we've treated him and I gave him a good dose of Medicam for the pain and for just the fact that it's inflamed a bit. So I'm hoping that will help. Other than that, I think the breeding has really come to a standstill. You guys look so good. So it's been a week? I think a week today. Yeah, I weaned them the day Charlie came last Monday, so it's been a week. They are doing really, really well. They're eating hay really nicely. They're on the creep really good still. They've been on it for a while. Uh, and they're taking the water. I accidentally got some stir on it because I bedded them up. Hi, Teddy. He's becoming super friendly. And little Pete is doing well. I would imagine one more week uh, with this guy and then we're going to retire her. Uh, and the temps are getting cold next week too. So I think I want to tear this down and put it in the shop so it doesn't freeze. Hey, it's supposed to get really cold next week. Well, the rest of them look. I haven't seen these guys in a bit. You take all my attention. You got everything under control in here? Hey, tomatoes. Hey, how are you? You guys are so chill. Loving it. Here today. I'm just checking in on the boys today. How are you feeling? Yesterday I did treat these two. Uh, William definitely looks more himself. His ears are perkier. Uh, Chris has said he was up and eating. Now Billy's still limping awful bad so I'm not sure what I want to do with him if I treat him again. Medicam, the painkiller that I give him, it's every other day so I think I'll wait and treat him tomorrow but Keeping a pretty close eye on him. He was eating, but he's also been doing a lot of laying down. So I'm a little concerned, but hopefully he'll be all right. Literally have become my children, these sheep. Always worrying. Look at the one beside him. Oh.
All right, this isn't really what I planned to do today, but I have such a big group of views to hoof trim uh, over the next couple weeks, and I knew there's no way I can get the mature use in this uh, turntable until they're sheared. Charlie's supposed to come Thursday, so I think this is all gonna happen next week, um, as well as vaccinating. These are the guys that are due in about seven weeks now already. Can you believe that? So this is a smaller group of ewe lambs that have been sheared already. They were sheared before I bred, just like the group, like just like Lilo's group. So I'm like, you know what? I can get them done all in one kind of go here in the next couple hours and they should be able to fit, hopefully, in that turntable. And then it's just less to do. Uh, there's still a hundred mature ewes I have to do after this group. So I thought, let's just do that. I have a quiet afternoon. Um, I'm stewing about something right now and I'm not good mentally. So I need to work usually. I need to keep my mind busy or I'm going to hole up somewhere and cry. Uh, so just been kind of a tough day. So. Um, this hopefully will make me happy. Hopefully this is not a bad decision. You guys have seen this over and over and over again. I'm just a broken record here, but this doesn't hurt them. This is my disclaimer. This needs to be done for foot health. Uh, on the pack, they do, their, their hooves get too soft and then they can't grind them off. I most definitely have to do my hooves uh, way more often than someone that are 100% on pasture. So yeah, so we do this very routinely now. Actually, I think I didn't do these guys that long ago, so I'm praying they're not too bad, but they grow, they grow quick. So just taking off the tips and then where they curl over the ends, just the nail. So, all right, you ready, lady? Yeah, that was a yeah. And I get them as snug as I can just so they don't and hurt themselves or me. These are the ladies that I still have to do. So you can see why I'm gonna wait until Charlie takes off their coat before I try to squeeze them into that chute because they are a little girthy. <laughs> so, it, and it's often they can fit if they wanna fit, but they don't want to fit. And then they will play this game of like, no, I am too wide to go in that and you're not gonna make me go in that. And then I break my knees trying to push them into the crate. So we're gonna wait until a Charlie visit and then uh, hopefully safely get this pen done. But that is a nice size for today. I'm feeling much better mentally and the sun is out for like the first time in weeks, which just makes everything feel better. One thing I'm noticing though, with this crazy temperature flip-flopping, it's cold at night, warm during the day, our litter is just gross. Uh, so I'm not sure if Carissa bedded these guys. She bedded everybody else today, but I wonder if she ran out for these guys. So I'm gonna give these guys a quick bed just so they're nice and uh, dry overnight. Fancy. 
Fuck. Fancy. Mm -hmm. There'd be lots of unknown substances. Alright, kids. We'll just bring them up and yeah. back. Good morning, everyone. We have a visitor today. Um, straight from Ireland. Um, so yeah, this is Michael from Flockwatch. You've heard me talk about him relentlessly. Uh, he is actually gonna just do some tutorials with me today and take me through three potential uh, uses of what I would use my software for, for the sheep. So my biggest one, my first one is always lambing. So I'm gonna make him, we're gonna scan a U and go through like what a lambing setup would look like. And then we're gonna go through and do like a U evaluation, so if I'm deciding whether I want to ship a U or keep a U, I want him to show like what steps I would take if we're doing that. And then the third one is sort of new, is the breeding group. Yeah, exactly. And then he's going to show me what the app can do for me to organize my breeding groups. And then you guys can get a good feel for what um, I'm kind of looking for in the flock watch. All right, so I'm gonna screen record what we're doing here so you guys can actually see. So we're gonna scan this U. We're gonna start with lambing. Perfect. Let's start with the lambing yeah, group. So we're lambing. gonna pretend this lady just had twins. Just, we're gonna say. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. I guess we can't scan the lambs, but we'll get, we'll get a few. So we're gonna scan mom. And we're going We're gonna to record task against animal, right? Exactly. And then we're gonna go lambing record. Yep. So say she was, so that, say this is winter. Yeah. So we'll just put her winter 2023, winter 2023 even though that's yeah. next year. Um, sh and then lambs born, she had two, right? Exactly. And then we're gonna go next. Uh huh. So how do I change this lambing number? Cause she'd be actually number one. So you can go in can and physically, I... physically change oh, the lambing okay. number so like that. So one. Leave the number sign. Exactly, yeah. You leave the number sign there okay. and then you just press one. Um, and then next. And next, and then. And then the gender would be whatever. So we'll just say she had a female. It's alive. That's when we would scan the tag, but we don't have the lamb. Exactly. So we're yeah. just going to pretend. It's the number one you that had the first lamb, mm -hmm. is what lambing number means. And then the season born was winter, date of birth was today. And then breed could be whatever. You can add an image of her if I wanted to. You could put in the sire. You can, and but I probably won't because I don't know what group it is. Group it is, but that's where I would put like group one, group two, group three, mm -hmm. and then I put the weight of the lamb, and then the bigger. Do you want? Should we just do that? Yeah, sure. Yeah. So they can see. So, oh yeah, kgs. What would a ten pound lamb be? Five kgs, say. Yeah. Well. We're going to have it, and it, it's going to be editable. Basically, you can have kgs or pounds. We can have pounds. Yeah, we can. Yeah, of course. We can have pounds, guys. Yeah. Okay, good. <laughs> As the rest of the world is like, okay, good for you. All right, so I'll just say five for now, and then there's lamb vigor, and then if the lamb is really good and active, I'd put very good. Rearing, she's a good mom. We'll say so. They were normal, and they're, none of them were mm -hmm. bottle fed. So now we go next. And then it's lamb number two, and we do the same thing for lamb number exactly. two. Exactly. Or if lamb number two had died, you can just put in a status dead, and you right. can see one lamb, and you can put in a note at the bottom to say what happened to the lamb. Right. Oh, right. I never did do that either. Exactly. There, is, there yeah. is notes here at the very bottom, guys, and I can write in, say, um, baby week, week, watch, or something, right? Exactly, yeah. And it's raining in here, so it's... And then just press save, or should I just erase everything now? You can just leave it, leave it like that. You can erase everything, but that's it. Save it then at that stage, and it will. And then oh, fill in gendered. Wanted a gender. So some of these things you have to put in. We'll say he's a boy. Okay. okay. And then it's got all the lambing details of this view. Yes, exactly. Okay. So so then basically when you are picking that view out next year, or you can scan the tag, look at her profile, look at the history, and you can see her lambing right there underneath that then in the history Actually, of the year. Actually, we could do that right now. We could check yeah. and see if she's got pedigree, because she might be in this group from September. Mm -hmm. So now I would go to history or His progeny? History of, of her, so. 
You so she, so that's today. And you can see her lambing from last year. And she had lambing tasks last year. So then would I click you, progeny to see how many lambs she's had? Exactly, yes. Okay, what, what am I looking at? So we can see from last year, you can see, okay, so these are the last few lambs oh. born, and these are the ones from four months ago. And sorry, she had a single last year, and then the year before that she had single as well. Okay. 21 months ago, so you can see the difference. So she's really only given me singles up to yeah. this year. Exactly. And she's having twins because I'm manifesting that right now. Mm -hmm. Okay, perfect. Good girl. Next, we're going to do a, an evaluation. Okay, so I'll scan the tag. Yeah, and then next thing you'll do is you look so, at. So, yeah, what will I do here? You look at her profile then. So, you can so view animal profile. View animal profile, yeah. Okay. Potentially, if you had issues with this one last year, you'd have changed her animal type from breeding you to in cull. So. Okay, you, but what if today is the day I'm deciding? Today is the day you're deciding. What then. do I look at? First thing you want to look at is history. Okay. History here. So, so you can you can see anything she's been treated with, right. if she got extra injections for lameness or okay. things like that. And then if you look at her details, then if you go through him, we have management details, we have ID. Um, so in management here then, if you had put a note in to say something happened at lambing time, that yeah. would appear here and you'd say, right. oh right, I know this one. She had right. prolapse or something happened right. to her. You can see the detail and the date you put it in for lambing and then you can say, right. So actually in this one, because I had to switch back to the Gallagher in the last lambing group, this is one that aborted her lamb early. So she had Q fever. Okay. So in that case, that would be under management. I'd probably write that in a note somewhere. You write I, that in I a wrote note. it in my notes on the Gallagher. Mm -hmm. So then, so same idea, I would wrote it, write it in the notes here. You could write in the notes here, but also you perform a lambing task even though the lamb is aborted. Right, which I did there. And you I could just, just say, it. exactly, yeah. yeah. And you can say the lamb is being aborted. So my biggest thing is, when people ask me what I want, um, when I'm actually working with the animals, I want to be able to bring my office down here. So when I'm spending time up there, I'm going through all the information of what he's talking about. Like I'm going through their notes. I'm going through like how many progeny she's had, how many have died, how many, like have I had issues with her? At the end of the day, all your decisions are going to be based on your you. Yeah, absolutely. Lamb, so. The problem is I'm trying to show you guys stuff and I don't have a lot of data over on to flock watch yet. So this is going to take like it's taken me almost eight years probably with the Gallagher to, to create enough of a history. So we're at the point now where it's like, how am I going to transfer all that data over to this? But I think for the next three or four years, there's just going to be some back and forth for reference. So if I have a question on a U, I'll use what I have on Flockwatch, but I'm probably going to have to double check on my Gallagher on stuff prior to 2022. Don't worry, Sandy, before you go, I'm, I'm going to have you all started. You're going to okay, me. okay, perfect. He's promising. All right, so the, net, the last thing we're going to look at, and this is new, and I think this is going to be pretty cool for anybody that is doing numerous breedings in a year, like me. Um, they've created a breeding group, which is actually what they're doing right now. So we're going to pretend that we don't have any of these used in my system at all. This is the first time through. This is her first breeding group, and we're going to decide what group she goes into. Yeah. And then we can show a breeding Breeding event. Breeding event then, exactly. Okay. Breeding, so, and you go um, in, press the orange plus button. Okay, we're gonna press the orange plus. And you're gonna say, create group. Create group. Yeah, and so you're gonna title it and just... Uh, what do we wanna put want here? To say, breeding group. Breeding. breeding. What did I say this was? Group three? Is it group three? Two? Who cares, doesn't matter. We'll say group yeah. three. And, if and then, to, do I say sort animals by yeah, tag you can, number? Some people want it by tag number, some people want it by age, depending okay. on it. We'll and do tag. You can put a little description in there if you want. You don't have um, to either. Yeah, I don't. I won't put anything there because it's just for experiment. Yeah. So now, basically, you just use your scanner and scan you, like I'll scan the girls just in this system right yeah. here. I remember him putting everything into a group he does, when yeah. I first watched that video. So we're gonna go animal selected? Yeah, so you can you can just have a double check then so you're happy with okay. how many animals selected and then you just press save. Press save. So that's your group created then. Okay, breeding group three. Now what do I do for So if if you want to say I've selected a certain RAM or RAMs for this so group. So these are all group two RAMs. 
Perfect. So what? where do I enter that? So you go into, orange, always the orange plus button is your, okay. when you want to enter a record. Even, even from this page or do I have to be no, at home? No, from any page, you okay. can always go from that there. So okay. you so go in into mating record. Mating record. Yeah. Oh, nice. So Date to let in you. So today's date exactly. there. And it gives the estimated lambing date. Exactly, yeah. That's, that's cool. Uh, um, and then RAM use, this is where I'd say group two. That, that would have been in there at that point. So you can just come back out and leave it as, as blank. Oh, I see. Yeah. And then if you'd use a rattle for the RAM, you could put it you in. You would it. put the color. Link to the tag numbers. Yeah. So we can do both ways. If you don't want to link to tag numbers, you can just create a group and say, I have 50 O's with that RAM. And off you go then. If you want to put in a group description there at that point again. Spell it right. Just like that. That's it. Next, then, so it doesn't let me go because I don't have a RAM used. Uh, yeah, exactly. Press the plus button there again. Plus. You can, cre oh, you can create a RAM on the fly here as you go then. So, so there's a little bit of both. We'll just say they're brought in. Yeah. And you can create then, so you have the oh, RAM. Oh, you're yeah. right, because none of my RAMs are in here right now. Exactly, yeah. So but if, if they were, they would show up. So that list would only show your RAMs. Yeah. So what's happened then, when you get to the end of the breeding task then, that your RAM is going to be selected, your group is going to be selected. So you just go in and select breeding group two or three, then you save it. So what's going to happen then is you're going to have that record saved against the use for breeding and, and you'll also have a, a due to lamb list. So then you Which can click really on, nice. exactly, yeah. So you can just go in and click on your due to lamb list and then it's going to have a countdown on the days to when that right. one is due. A lot of you have asked, so I want Michael to answer, how does this marry with a lot of these genetic uh, improvement software that's already available for pe that people are already using. So in Canada, we have a thing called Genovis. So they're able to compare their stock with with the same breed from all the farmers that participate in it. So mm -hmm. it's like a it's benchmarking, and then they can rank themselves and how they're improving genetically with other people that are part of the program. So. How does your system marry to those things? Is it all just through Excel? Like you'll just download everything to a spreadsheet and fire it off to Genovis or whatever whatever flock improvement company you're working with? Yeah, well, th that's one way we can we can do it. Like, and we've in the past with our cattle one as well, we have linked in the back end with some of these um, genetic groups as well, where we send okay. the data over. Um, but like this, from that, you'd be able to pull down a report of in Excel for right. your best performing use or your best lambs with the average daily gain or which ram has been the best for you this year with the slow, most amount of days right. or least amount of days to market um, and you can send that off then if you're linked with them and they should be able to take that right. e data easily and upload it. All right, well, we're gonna run out of battery here. That's almost half an hour. So thank you for doing that. Thank you for coming. Well, it's great to be here. Great to meet you in person. So <laughs> you guys, uh, yeah, check out Flockwatch. The app is now available in Canada and the US. This is not sponsored, by the way. So it's yeah. It's a pleasure, Sandy. Like, we're, we're, they did we're give me, so they much. did let me use this though. So, so that's yeah. pretty amazing. Um, and I, I get some pretty nice swag and some Irish whiskey. So that's pretty cool. <laughs> But he may have to stay overnight because it's literally a snowstorm outside. <laughs>